<laughs> so, um, Mr. Chairman, members of the Council and uh, public viewing tonight, uh, it's time for the presentation to you of the annual operating budget. Now, just a small caveat so that we're clear here. This is the operating budget. This doesn't include any capital expenses. That will be presented to you separately on another night. Immediately following the presentation, you'll be given the, um, your budget books um, with um, a much more detailed version of what I'm about to present to you in writing as an executive summary of the budget that you'll see. So, hopefully I pushed the right buttons. Okay. <clears throat> the council had a few goals that you wanted to see realized in this budget. First, no use of new fiscal 16 tax revenue. That's the 871846 that you voted that we would not levy. Um, secondly, that we would increase the town employee health insurance contribution share from 50% to 60%. Third, that we would reduce our use of non-cyclical revenue for the operating budget, specifically the Casella money that will end in approximately six years, and the use of free cash. We use about two million, a million from Casella, <laughs> and about a million from free cash every year. Those revenues, in the case of Casella, will end in six years. In the case of free cash, are very unpredictable, and so relying on them as a regular source of the budget is very dangerous. So you wanted that reduced. A fourth goal was added somewhat informally during the budget, uh, the revenue expense forecast about a month ago. After it was realized that current expenses greatly exceed available annual revenue. Why is that? That $2 million, a million from Casella and a million from free cash that's in your budget and that supports expenses is not sustainable going forward. So while the council never voted this goal, the staff took it upon themselves that we would attempt to reduce the operating budget in an amount at least equal to 500000 What that would do is it would position you better in future years going forward to live without that million dollars of landfill royalties and the free cash every year. Um, very happy to report to the council that all four goals have been accomplished in this budget. The tax revenue um, of 871, 846 has not been used to balance this budget, not a penny of it. The town's health contributory share has been increased in this budget from 50% to 60%. The cost of doing that was $320,300, and as you'll see, it did not come from savings with respect to uh, implementing the benchmark plan because, unfortunately, even the benchmark plan causes an uh, increase to the budget, and we'll talk about that a bit later tonight. Our use of landfill royalties, we've taken 150000 of that money out of the revenue uh, stream supporting this budget, and we've taken 50000 of free cash out. That means of that $2 million of those non-sustainable revenues, we've been able to take about 10% of that out of this year's budget. I really wish that we had made, um, had been able to make more progress on that note, uh, but that's what we were able to accomplish for you. And finally, with a goal of $500,000 reduction in the permanent budget, we were able to actually reduce $765,000, which was much greater than the goal. Um, how did we accomplish that? First. The power purchase agreement that you signed back in November is going to give the town $296,182 in reduced electric costs. Now, that's the first year. Uh, you may recall that when you did that and we did the revenue estimates for you back in November, we were talking closer to a half a million. The reason it's not quite that yet is because those solar fields are not all built. There's three of them. They'll be coming online through the fiscal year and as those come online, we'll realize more revenue. Next fiscal year, um, July 1st, 2016 to June 30, 17, you will probably get a lot more money um, as those uh, last two um, solar fields are built. But the 296 um, this year is uh, pretty good. Pretty happy about that. Second, we discovered uh, some weeks ago during a review of the budget that the Wells School was being fully heated and lighted. Um, and um, despite the fact that the uh, buyers had indicated a willingness to have it fully winterized, we have now winterized it, and the cost of the town, I'm um, sorry, the savings of the town is 66,000. 20 or 30 of that is on the electric side, the rest is on the heating side. 
Um, the buyer has agreed to that in writing and has no objection. As you probably know, their plan is to essentially gut the interior. So uh, there really was no point whatsoever in keeping it heated and lighted. It's unused. Um, it is, however, um, under surveillance. We have uh, adopted a different method for that, which I won't report publicly, obviously. But it is under surveillance, despite the electricity not being on inside the building. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, the health insurance benefits redesign, i.e. the benchmark plan, when we got the quotes from the only two carriers that were interested, Maya, on behalf of Blue Cross and Fallon, uh, did not result in savings below the current budget. Um, <clears throat> it did allow the FY15 budget to not have to be increased. And I'll talk about that later tonight, but rough uh, numbers. Were we to stay with our current plan, our budget would have to go up 450000 divided 50-50 between the employees and the town to stay with the current plan. Whereas if we go with the benchmark plan, the budget only has to go up about 51000 So uh, the benchmark plan does save money, but it does not allow our budget to go down, and that had been the hope. We also received some new state aid from the governor's proposed budget. House 1, as it's called, uh, is late this year because we have a new governor, and the new governor is given 90 extra days to propose his or her budget. Uh, we picked up $433,344 in that proposal in local aid, more than what we had forecasted back in January when we did our original forecast. Now, <clears throat> that forecast called for a 2% increase in Chapter 78 and a 5% decrease in other governmental aid, basically all the rest of it. What we got was much, much better, um, <clears throat> $433,000 um, beyond what we had predicted. It's actually over a half a million over what we got last year. So <clears throat> in past history, basically ever since Prop 2.5 passed in 1980, the governor's budget, House 1, has always become the benchmark, the bottom line for what we're going to get in local aid. And in fact, usually the legislature very quickly, after the governor proposes his budget, um, adopts something called a local aid resolution where they say, yes, this is what you're going to get. Whatever else the budget looks like for the state, you're going to get this much. And that always batches pretty much exactly what the governor proposes in House 1. So cities and towns forever once House 1 comes out and we get those numbers, and they're typically announced at the MMA meeting in January, <clears throat> this year again, it was a little bit later, typically we put those numbers right into our budget, and we're pretty safe. When the state budget finally emerges, usually in a conference committee, out in June or July and sometimes even August, we know that we're going to get at least what was in the governor's budget. But this is a different year. Um, the House and Senate have refused to pass a local aid resolution so far. And in so doing, they're saying that they may not necessarily agree with the governor's proposal uh, for increased local aid in House 1. So what we've done is we've only predicted 75 percent. We've left the rest of that money there. The way we've structured this budget, if the remainder of that money were to occur, and since the budget is already balanced on the basis of a more modest projection, my suggestion to you would be to take that additional state aid when it emerges, amend this budget, and use it exclusively for the purpose of reducing either the landfill royalties or free cash and make some further progress on those two goals. Um, <clears throat> in addition to those new revenues, we also had to reduce the budget. So, um, the school budget has been reduced to approximately 300000 and the town budget 570000 When I met with the superintendent and the financial team <clears throat> and announced uh, to the superintendent that that was my recommendation, um, I had a couple ideas in mind. First, to keep the cut impact to the school department as low as possible. Now, the school department budget is about two-thirds of all spending, and the general government is about one-third. So in past years when you've had to cut budgets, generally you took whatever the cut amount was and you said to the school, you have two-thirds of the cut, the town will take one-third. That would have resulted in just about exactly a flip of these numbers. The school would have had 570, 600, we'd have had about 300. I'm always trying to read sometimes what the council is saying to me. Sometimes that's unspoken. <coughs> sometimes it's very clear. In this case, what I thought I heard you saying during the discussions on the budget was that your preference 
was that we not um, reduce the school budget uh, by as much perhaps has been done in the past in similar kinds of situations. So um, I offered the superintendent a $300,000 cut and that the town would take the bulk of the reduction. We also wanted to have an opportunity for the schools to do even better than the $300,000 cut. And so as you'll see later in this presentation, we offered the school department a challenge to correct some um, management practices that have been engaged in in the past and by so doing realize back into their budget some of that 300000 that they won't ultimately have to cut. And I'll show you how that works. Unemployment compensation, as I showed you in a revenue expense forecast a few weeks ago, has been running typically two, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year for three or four years now. The vast majority of that occurs in the school department and it is a result of certain management practices which causes layoffs, separations from involuntary separations from school service by a number of employees annually. I won't get into tonight, and it's not my purpose to get into what those practices are, it is simply to suggest to you that I've reviewed those and they can be changed. And if those practices are changed, then unemployment can be reduced. And I think it's a fairly straightforward thing to do that. And I will, I will not speak for the superintendent. I think she concurs, and I'm hoping that the school committee concurs as well. So what we did is we took the $215,000 unemployment budget, which exists outside the school and the town budget, and I said to the superintendent, I'm going to give you, as part of your $300,000 cut, this unemployment money, $200,000. But if you can change the practices that lead to that expense every year, then you can keep whatever you save. And my hope is that with that opportunity that the school department is, enable, is able to indeed change those practices, save that money, and retain it in their budget. The other cut of the 300000 100 is the actual cut. So 100000 of the 871000 is an actual cut. Yes, so we hope it's less. <laughs> Over on the general government side, <clears throat> we had to do a number of things in order to make that $570,000 cut work. And as you'll see, we substantially exceeded it. First, there were four permanent positions unfilled. They were vacant and unfilled. Um, we had been freezing those for some months now in anticipation of this possibility, so we eliminated them. That was one police officer, one firefighter EMT, one DPW equipment operator, and one library employee. Um, it is just coincidental that those happen to fall in exactly uh, those four uh, large departments. It was not choice. <clears throat> that saved approximately a quarter million dollars in direct payroll and fringe benefit costs. We, it could, the savings could be larger because what we can't say is who of those four people would have taken the town's health insurance and would not. Statistically, about 50% of our eligible employees take our health insurance, so we could add another 20 odd thousand to that savings, but we took it on a conservative estimate and said about a quarter million. In addition to that, there were other personnel reductions made in this budget. One town hall clerical position was eliminated. We're hoping to do that by transfer um, to the school department, and we've been assured that the school department will accept that employee. The logic prevailed when we saw where this budget was going that it was necessary after we made those four personnel cuts, police, fire, DPW, library, that more was needed and we didn't think it was equitable or fair to turn to those four departments to make yet another cut, so we looked at town hall as the only remaining place to make a cut and that's why that position was eliminated. Now in order to do that, we needed to reassign some clerical staff in the building. So three additional positions have been assigned new duties. We have restructured um, those assignments. One DPW position uh, was reclassified with a, re with a reduction, and the council subcommittee clerical um, capability was eliminated. Council, of course, can restore that if you want, but my logic is simple. The vast majority of those subcommittee meetings are very brief. Um, there's no reason why uh, the town manager can't take the minutes or a member of the committee, or a citizen member of the committee without having to pay for it. A number of other 
operating budget reductions were necessary because with all those cuts, we hadn't quite gotten where we needed to be yet. We had originally, in the forecast that I showed you back in January, provided for a 2.5% COLA for all employees. The police and fire unions, it's already in their contract. Those contracts don't expire until June 30, 2016, so that 2.5% COLA is a fixed item. However, the non-union and the DPW employees, we reduced that COLA, recommended COLA from 2.5 to 2.0. That saved about $25,000. Town council, council as in town attorney um, policy that you have to take a look at later tonight, if that's approved and those practices are put into effect, it's going to allow you to reduce your town attorney budget. Um, so we've taken a conservative estimate, 15,000, we've reduced it. I think the actual reduction you'll see at the end of next year will be more substantial, but we felt very confident that this will occur if you implement that policy. Um, the uh, new building commissioner, as you know, um, our current commissioner has uh, given us his uh, retirement and will be uh, doing that at some point in the not distant future. The new commissioner will come in lower on the pay scale and that ends up because there will be a new employee as opposed to a many, many year employee as our current commissioner is and that's about a $10,000 savings. The regional veteran service organization that we started with Charlton last year, requires Charlton to pay us 16000 That's new revenue. Our cost didn't go up. It went down. Um, and we have the benefit of having that additional revenue now uh, available to us. And the less buybacks, uh, sick leave buybacks this year, that's about a $15,000 savings. So that's about an $80,000 savings there. There were other cuts made in the budget that were not in the area of personnel. The vast majority of the cuts are in the area of personnel because about 80% of our budget is personnel costs. So in order to get the budget down by over half a million, it was necessary to make personnel reductions. But there were other opportunities when we looked at the budget. Um, the assessors and Will Cornier, the chief assessor, looked at the overlay. Originally, we had forecasted 225,000. They are exceptionally good at the way they do their job, particularly Will, um, as chief assessor, and they get very few appeals. So it was their um, decision after they looked at the 225, this being a reval year coming, and that's why they wanted to boost it, that they could get by with the 200,000. Um, that is very much to their credit, uh, to the entire board of assessors and to Will Cornier in particular, that they're able to live with this small um, an overlay. The overlay, as you recall, is a margin to cover exemptions and abatements that are granted and tax, property tax appeals that are filed. Electricity, as already noted, was reduced 296,000. There are uh, less elections next year, so we're able to reduce that budget by 10,000. And so all those changes saved about 35,000. Now there are some increases in this budget as well. Um, <clears throat> the first of those is the cost of living adjustment for police and fire that I just mentioned and the 2% increase for non-union and DPW. Um, in addition, this budget contains 45000 in new spending to implement the Quinn Bill for police officers who do not currently receive the Quinn Bill. I will be giving you a separate memo on that subject probably in a week or two about why I think it's necessary for the town to have a Quinn Bill, uh, to pay the Quinn Bill, or some sort of educational uh, stipend for police officers because I believe we are becoming non-competitive in the marketplace. Um, combined effects of the 50-50 um, health insurance contribution, which is less than most communities pay, and the lack of Quinnbill funding, educational incentive for police officers, is costing us offices. That's the, that's the reality. And I'm going to present you with a memo that's going to show what our neighbors are doing in that line. But again, I want to emphasize, this is a balanced budget that has accomplished all those goals I already mentioned, everything the council asked for, but this funding is included. The fire department has long wanted to have a single one day a year department-wide training day. They can't do it because there isn't enough money in their budget to pay the overtime for people to come in who are not already on, that are not already on staff that day. Bringing the entire department together for a training exercise is enormously 
beneficial to the operation of the department, but it costs money, $24,000 to be specific. So I've provided that funding in this budget. Again, the budget is balanced. It accomplished all your goals, but this funding was able to be accommodated. <laughs> Our Veterans Benefit Program chronically um, is overexpended. There's no point to that because you must spend those Chapter 115 benefits. It's not an optional thing. If uh, soldiers come in uh, to Mike Trombley, a veterans officer, looking for those benefits, they must be provided them by law. We've chronically underfunded that budget, so we've increased spending uh, by 10,000. 75% of that, by the way, comes back to the town from the state. We get reimbursed for that, so it's not really a $10,000 increase. It's a $2,500 increase net. And finally, recreation programs. That budget has been increased $5,000 um, in order to allow some recreation programs to be expanded. We have a new uh, recreation director, as you know, 20 hours a week, and we want to be sure that he's got the materials available to be able to offer good recreational uh, programming to our families in town. There was no money in the current budget for programming, so we put 5000 in. It's a modest amount, um, but I think Stephen and I both agree that it's uh, money that will go a long ways because he'll make it stretch. So, <clears throat> to summarize, all of the council's goals are met in this budget. There are no new prop two and a half property taxes. The 871,000 will not need to be levied. The town's health insurance contribution is increased to 60%. The use of landfill royalty free cash has been cut by 200,000 and the budget has been permanently reduced by three quarters of a million dollars. A COLA for all employees has been included. Funding for the Quinn Bill has been included for new employees, I should say. Existing employees already get that, as you know, police officers. This would be for new police officers. The fire training day is included. The recreation department is fully established now. And the regional veterans district is well established now. I would like to represent to the council that this budget is a little bit of a miracle. I don't think a month ago when we gave you the revenue expense forecast that we gave you and the council that night voted to eliminate 871,000 in tax revenues, I don't think anybody would have had a realistic expectation that we would have accomplished all of these goals and done this in a single year. This is really a somewhat miraculous um, result. And I want to give credit to some people because they're the people who work very, very hard for you, the council, to produce a budget that realizes your goals. And it was very hard for the taxpayers of this community to allow us to have a balanced budget and it allows the council to not have to levy new taxes next year. The most important of those people, Karen Hornoy, Will Cornier, and Mindy Ernst Fournier, the treasure collector, Chief Assessor and CFO, respectively. I know they're here somewhere. Um, oh, they're looking up at the thing. Okay, great. <laughs> That's a great piece of work they did. And believe me, it's hundreds of hours of time that they gave to produce this result. I want to give a real, real strong thank you to Cheryl Stanton, the interim superintendent of schools. Cheryl has been an absolutely marvelous partner throughout this process. She's been as willing and cooperative as anybody could possibly be in working with us. She accepted that $300,000 cut right off the bat. She was grateful, subject of course to the school committee's agreement. She was grateful it wasn't more and she was as cooperative as I could have uh, expected. I couldn't have had a better partner and I want to be sure to say that publicly. I don't know if Cheryl is here, but mm -hmm. Cheryl is here. There she is. Thank you, Cheryl, very much. I also wanted to uh, thank uh, all of the department heads, but in particular, Chief Charette, Chief DeFranzo, um, DPW Director Heather Blakely, and Head Librarian Margaret Morrissey. Each of those department heads had an enormous amount of work to get from where their budgets originally came in, just status quo, just picking up for the cost of inflation and things like that, and get those budgets down to where they finally came in. Um, and it's somewhere in the range of like a little over a 1% increase that those budgets collectively came in. They all lost employees. They all did it 
Um, I won't say happily or willingly. I don't think it would be fair to say that. But on the other hand, they did it cooperatively and they did it with good cheer. And I can't expect more than that. And most important, I want to be sure that we staff, that we, that we thank the staff that works for you and me directly, Yvonne Tortoise, Kim Farron, and Cheryl Ryan. As I said to you in the executive summary memo, um, it isn't just the, the case that while we're, all this stuff is swirling around, health insurance, balancing the budget, uh, the Charlton Water Agreement, the Casella um, Amendment to the contract, all enormous topics. It isn't just that they keep your schedule running and my schedule running, but they do it with incredibly good humor and with a smile, and they make everybody else that comes to that office feel good. That's pretty remarkable, and I want to thank those three ladies. That, Mr. Chairman and members of the Council, is the presentation. As I say, the budget books will be given to you, I think, very shortly, and um, you have a very detailed executive summary message in it, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Councillor Vecchia. Um, through the chairman to the town manager. A couple of points. Are you going to go over here? I am, sir. Okay. You mentioned that the school budget was cut $300,000. It wasn't actually cut 300000 It was increased 305000 So why do you mention it was cut 300000 when you gave them 305000 more than they had last year? Yes, what I'm referring to is the budget that you saw, the theoretical construct in January, had to be reduced. That budget, which was 2 percent increase, was reduced 3 percent. I understand completely. But when you're up there and you, people are listening to you and you said that they had to take a $300,000 cut, they did not take a $300,000 cut. They got an increase of $305,000. That's, That's correct. correct. Okay. Now, the second thing. Um, you cut everything and you said it was a miracle, but you managed to increase the health insurance $320,000. Now, you had mentioned to us that it wouldn't cost us anything to go to the 60-40 split, but I see here it's going to cost us $320,000. Again, what's, what's the problem here? Well, I don't, I'm not going to go for $320,000 extra in the budget. You stated it wasn't going to cost us any money. Well, the council had conflicting goals, as you see. The goal of increasing the contributory share from 50-50 to 60-40 does not come without a price, and that price is 320000 When we were unable to realize it with the new benchmark plan design, because it didn't, the quotes from the insurance companies didn't come in low enough, the choice was either stay at 50-50 and implement the benchmark plan, which would have been quite disadvantageous to the employees because they would have had to absorb co-pays and deductibles and got no increase. I made the decision to implement the council's goal by cutting elsewhere in the budget. I'm, gladly, I'm glad you said you made the decision because the second thing you said up there was that we, one of the goals that we had was to go to 60-40. We never voted on 60-40 and I don't know if you got the five votes here to go to 60-40. Actually, Councillor, you did vote the 60-40. It's part of your goals and objectives that you voted in November unanimously. You voted for it as well. Mm -hmm. If it wouldn't cost us any money, we voted for it. That is that, not what the goal says. Well, that's what, we, that's what I think the majority up here thought, that it wasn't going to cost us any money because you said you were going to find a way to get that money back. Respectfully, that may be, may be what you meant, but it is not what this Council said. Okay, fine. So, okay, play on words. Another thing, you managed to add 2 percent raises in a $45,000 to the Quinn bill. So if you were so tight for money, how did you manage to raise 45000 for the Quinn bill and 2 percent cost of living increases? We did it utilizing all the things that I just showed you in that presentation where we cut a lot of other expenses and we realized some new revenue. It's a combination of all these things that allows this budget to balance. There is no single quid pro quo where this revenue went up and this cost went up. It's all an enormous $56 million um, pot, which some things go up, some go down. But at the end of the day, the goal that was charted by the council was accomplished. Well, that's what you're saying. Now, I have another question. You keep on mentioning a million dollars that we get from Casella for the landfill. 
Well, we have two items here. Landfill royalty, 950000 and landfill reimbursement, 590000 That totals $1.5 million, not $1 million. What am I missing? Well, in point of fact, the total amount that Casella gives to the town is more in the order of $4 million. Um, a million of that is a deferred cost because they provide curbside collection. Um, uh, Two million dollars a year is about the normal royalty fee. They also provide money reimbursement for the construction of commercial drive, and they support uh, through, re through reimbursements the majority of the Board of Health staff. So the 1.5 is just the portion that we use to support the budget. There's other money that goes elsewhere. Is that other money in the revenues here? Um, no, it's not pictured in the revenues. For instance, the money that supports the Board of Health staff is not in that revenue statement. It's a direct reduction to the Board of Health. Oh, we okay, just okay. net the budget okay. in here. But here's my point. I think it was five, six years ago, I voted for the Industrial Park Road because we were going to get $2.5 million extra. And you keep on saying that we're only getting a million dollars when you're, now you're saying we're getting four million. So I think the town should know that Casella, everything adds into about four million dollars. When you make a statement that it's a million dollars, it isn't a million dollars. It might be a million dollars on your sheet, okay? But it's four million dollars. That's very important because I've been staying right along. The, the, the main reason, one of the main reasons I voted for the road, and I was deciding to vote, that probably road was, still wouldn't even be, been built. I think Conrad can vouch for that, okay? Because we were going to get an extra $2.5 million a year. So that's very important to me. We don't we, disagree. Okay. Besides that, you answered my questions. I appreciate it, and thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else with questions or comments? Sure. Yep. Just come up uh, with your name and address, please. Kevin Buxton, 28 Columbus Avenue. You just mentioned the curbside pickup as $630,000. Uh, isn't it true that the town pays $630,000 and then Casella reimburses monthly that same amount back? So isn't that a pretty much a wash other than the interest they make on the money while they're sitting on it? I don't uh, think I mentioned the number 630000 Oh, okay, you mentioned the, cur the curbside pickup contract is $630,000. The okay. town pays it initially. Not, that's not my number, just so it's oh, clear. Okay. Uh, the town pays it initially, and then Casella pays back monthly that same amount. I just wanted to make that clear because you made it sound like we receive those funds um, as revenue to the town, but it's really just a reimbursement or shell, I won't say shell game, that sounds like, uh, I just wanted to clarify on that. Um, and I'll save my other statements for assistance for thank you. Thank you. Councilor Clements. Thank you. I just want to be clear through you to the, to the town manager to make sure I fully understand. The money that we're doing with curbside pickup, we as a community could not afford to have free curbside pickup without them absorbing that cost of free curbside pickup. We'd probably be a pay-as-you-throw community, which we will probably be in the future, or some other entity, because I can't imagine that, that we're going to be able to come up with seven or 800000 for curbside pickup for the entire community down the road, I, not when we have schools to fund and, and other issues. As you say, it's an in-kind service that they give the town. But, but if they were not, when the landfill closes, by understanding their obligation to give it also terminates, the town at that point would either have to come up with the money to pay for a town-wide contract, or we'd have to turn it over to the individual uh, homeowner to, to pay for. Mm -hmm. Either way, it would be a loss of uh, substantial right. revenue to the homeowner. Right. So it is a benefit yes. regardless to everybody who uses it in the community. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Manna. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to the town manager. Um, I'm curious, it's, it could be in our budget books. Um, I had requested a few months ago, I believe, the amount owed to the town in, in regards to water and sewer 
property taxes and excise taxes and whatnot you is uncollected yes taxes yes. and water sewer mm -hmm. i'm sorry if you didn't get that it's on the monthly i believe that's on the monthly quarterly report isn't it no all right we'll get it for you my apologies okay. thank you in terms of budget um the first thing I wrote down was one of your first slides, uh, the 296182 in regard to the um, electricity uh, revenues. How, I mean, how certain are we that we will get that type of number? I mean, this, the budget is, is predicated on certain assumptions here, obviously. Um, if we don't get the 296 or if there's some fraction of it, where do we stand? I look at some of these, you know, some other numbers like that. So. I just um, and can we? The other question would be: Can we continue? The governor is giving us the extra monies. You're taking 75 percent on the next side of it on the local aid. Will we be able to support this type of budget next? Year, you know, as we go forward, if we implement some of the additional uh, costs that we've put in, some of the savings have represented us to be now have additional costs in, in other um, very good things that we need for this community. Will we be able to? Um, then continue to fund them. Obviously, we have a revenue stream from electricity, but at this moment, that's not guaranteed. At this moment, you know, because we're waiting for those solar to go on so the solar farms to. One hundred, one hundred percent of the revenue that supports this supports this budget is all projected. Mm -hmm. There isn't a single number in there that's actual because it is the nature of municipal budgeting that at this time of year, we sit down and do a forecast of our revenues for July one. Uh, 2015 through June 30, 2016. Mm -hmm. The state just did the same thing. The state takes the legislative leadership in the governor's office and they get together and they do basically what Karen and Will and uh, Mindy and I did and they put a statement on the table and then they have a discussion about what they think is realistic. And it's generally based on um, prior year performance and um, an estimate of what uh, will come from other categories. Motor vehicle excise is a million dollars. And every year we have to forecast where we think it's going. So I look at website for new car sales and some other econometric uh, tools that are available. At the end of the day, you do your best to estimate these revenues. Mm -hmm. Now, in the case of the two you mentioned, um, uh, once the governor's budget is set, once local aid is set, it doesn't tend to go down unless, and it has gone down in some years, there's some sort of draconian set of events. The last time it went down, uh, it was back in the 90s when um, we had a, a recession. Mm -hmm. Now, remarkably, in the last recession, it didn't go down. The one that just started in 2008 and um, probably is over about a year ago. So <clears throat> is it possible that the governor's budget that he's setting this year that produces this new revenue could go down in a future year? Of course. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would just about guarantee it will sometime. But. Um, you know, that's not the way you do budgeting. You forecast the governor, local aid, and then you tend to expect that will be relatively sustainable for a period of time, five to six years, absent the crash in the economy. Um, with respect to the solar revenue, we have done that forecast extremely conservatively. I think you will actually get quite a bit more. Mm. But what we did is remember that it's the difference between the price at which we purchased mm -hmm. those solar credits, 11.5, and the um, price set by the utilities, um, uh, Department of Public Utilities for um, trading of those uh, uh, power purchase credits currently set at 23.4 cents. Were we to um, realize the entire uh, margin, it would be closer, actually a little bit over half a million dollars. Right. So what we did is we, we forecasted it conservatively. We dropped it down uh, to a purchase price of 11.5, a sale price of 18 cents, um, and we're very confident that that number is easily realized and there will be more on top of it. So what we're doing is we're taking around two-thirds of what we really think it is, um, and then in future years you'll tweak it as it starts to get better. The difference between what we estimate and what actually comes in um, is the byproduct, one factor in free cash for June 30th of next year. But all the revenues, believe me, if I were of a mind to forecast too liberally, um, your CFO, Karen Arnois, is definitely not. And so Karen is extremely conservative and cautious and does not allow anybody to establish an estimated revenue without being very sure that we're going to realize it. 
And remember, it's the nature of these things. Some of those revenues will come in a little less than we forecast. Others will come in a little higher. Mm -hmm. And um, that ebb and flow through the whole $56 million of revenue we realize um, typically results in a surplus of $1 to $2 million. That's free cash. So we're, we feel we're being very conservative with this estimate. And just one other follow-up. Um, without having seen the budget book and looking through the various departments, which I know we'll get to, um, have we cr created any um, cushioning? We talked about some capital accounts, uh, some um, capital <coughs> improvements for certain areas. Uh, have we managed to put anything in that area? Um, I want to say capital. Well, you've got, We're you've yeah. got money in stabilization in right. water and sewer surplus. Right. So there is money available for, for capital spending. Right. I'll be sending out the instructions on that probably next week okay. or later this week. And then it's going to take two or three weeks to assemble the capital budget. And that will be back in, in front of the council probably um, uh, about by, I would say, mid-April-ish, thereabouts. Okay. That's the second component to all this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Mayna. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. I just want to make a clarification. I did receive some of that information I requested. I, I suppose I was just questioning the collections. How are we doing on the collections? So if we could see how we're doing on those collections, and that does affect our... Sure, we'll, we'll get that to you. Okay, thank yep. you. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments at this time? Councilor Pelican. Will the school be having a capital budget this year, or is it just on the town side? I'm sorry? Will there be a capital budget for the school this year, as there was this past year? Um, the question is, will there be a, a school budget presentation? No, for the school. Uh, capital budget oh, for capital the budget? Um, for the school. They'll be invited to submit like every other department will, sure. And, and I, I don't know what they'll submit, but they'll certainly be invited, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. 